Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Awaken Suddenly Live Quick Talk. When? Right now, of course. Why? Because it's always now. It's always, always, always now. So uh, I'm going to just kind of waste a minute or two and allow a few people to get on first. This is something uh, new that I'm going to be doing on a fairly regular basis. Um, the reason being is, is Kelly and I, our lives are uh, joyously filled with, with days of communicating with each other uh, uh, about spiritual matters, about consciousness, uh, uh, about life. Um, and it, sometimes we run into some things that, you know, it's just like, you know, that was perfectly said. Kelly will say to me, like, like, that was so good. And it's like, you know, I got to write it down. But of course you don't. So what I've come up with is this concept that, um, and, and they're not going to be as long as this first one, okay? They're going to be short. This first one, I'm giving time in case a few people show up. Because you never know who's going to show up. And the reality of it is, is that, uh, you know, this was yesterday during the great Facebook and Instagram outage of 2019. <laughs> and I admit, I was a little frustrated that I could, I, I kept trying to get on, uh, like as, as soon as I had this conversation with Kelly, I'm like, honey, I'm going to do a live right now. Couldn't get on, no matter what I did. Checked every setting. Sent a message to Facebook, you know, what's going on? Uh, and then someone sent me a news link, and I understood. So that was fine. Turn the computer off. Not a big deal. So what are we going to talk about today? Let's get right to it, because this is supposed to be a quick talk, and that's how these are going to go, okay? And, you know, just because I say it's a quick talk doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be quick. Sometimes there'll be enough questions, enough conversation going, that will keep it going as long as necessary. But the point is, is to keep it fairly short. So pushing up against, Kelly and I were talking about this yesterday, okay? And, and I'm going to find a, an object here that I can use. So this is my handing binder, okay? And, and I want to make sure everyone can see this, so, so forgive me. Oh, I see Teresa's here. Hi, Teresa. We haven't seen you in quite a while. It's so good to have you. We're doing a quick talk today. And our quick talk today is about pushing up against and control, okay? So uh, these are going to be something we're going to start doing regularly whenever Kelly and I have a deep conversation and something really meaningful comes up out of it. I'm going to try and get online and have a quick talk. So when you're pushing up against something, what, what do you have to do to push up against something? Well, you have to be close to it, right? You, you see how close this is to my face? Because my hands have to be on it, right? When you push up against something, you, you got to be close. You're right up against it pushing, like this. All your might, even your head sometimes. Or like this. Now, do you perceive what the issue with that is? See, when you push up against what is, that's the only thing you can see is the thing that you're pushing up against. The, the, the rest of your vision, you, you, you can't see anything at all. In the peripheral vision, you get occasional glimpses. But the more you're focused on what you're pushing up against, the more blind you become. Now, if you can accept that what is, is, and that it is insanity to push up against it because it already exists. If you can accept that, what does that mean? No longer am I standing here. I have just created a space and almost spilled my water jug. <laughs> I've just created a big space between me and whatever it is that I was pushing up against. So what happens to my vision now? Well, now my vision is complete. Some 220 degrees worth. 
instead of that narrow little 15 degree window. When you accept that what is, is, and become unwilling to judge it, you have created a large space between you and that which it is that you were pushing against. And I'm going to use me as a personal example right now because I'm going through it, okay? I um, have uh, two virtually disintegrated vertebrae, my L5 and L4, my tailbone. And I should never let them cut that tail off when I was young, I tell you. And my L3 is jutting out and compressing my sciatic nerve and the nerves that run along my groin and through the front of my leg. So every step is pain. Sitting is pain. Lying down and trying to sleep is painful. So you can imagine how much sleep I get. Now, I admit that in the last few days, uh, the, the anti-inflammatories and relaxants have helped considerably. And I can sleep for four or five hours. But I don't not want to have the pain. See, the pain represents that thing that is. The damage to my spine is very real. It is. I knew it was coming sometime or later. It's always been a concern. I've been busted up quite a number of times, and this body has served me well. But because I'm not pushing up against the damage, pushing up against the pain, because I'm accepting the pain, there is now a space between the pain and me. The pain is not me. That object that you're pushing up against is not you. In the standing back, we allow ourselves to see what life is showing us. We allow ourselves to cease the judgment and instead see if what's there serves us or not. And indeed, we should love it because we are co-creators of it and we wish our creator to love its creation no matter what, right? So, so too do we need to love our creations. Now, the idea of pushing up against is all based around the concept that you have some sort of control over anything that's external of you. And I'm here today to tell you and remind you that that is a lie. The only control you have and have ever had is the control within the body's energy field called you. That's it. Anything external to you is beyond your control. So why would you worry about things that are external to you? Because indeed, you can't control them anyway. You may think you're controlling them. It may feel like you're controlling them. But you're only looking on the surface level. The only control we have is in what we choose. In how we choose to either react, which is literally to take an old thing that resembles this current present moment thing and do an overlay of the old thing right on top of that present moment thing and then react the exact same way we acted the last time. Or we can rearrange those letters. Reactions become creations when you are conscious. Everything that is brought to you is allowing you to choose, to grow and to evolve and to create again. Love what you create. Do not push it away. Do not push up against it and let it go. Take your attention off of it. When you take your attention off of it, you take the energy away from it and you restore that energy to your being and then you can place that energy again on that which you wish to create. Control is only available here. 
And most of us are not nearly in control of our own minds as we should be. Mine occasionally still runs amok, although I have to admit, Kelly will tell you, it's fairly rare, but it happens. The thoughts are beyond your control, but you get to choose how to react or create or whether to simply not react at all, which is a totally different type of reaction. It is a return to centeredness and stillness and allowing life to unfold around you. That's it. That's all. That's all I have to say today. Much love to you all. I hope you've enjoyed this quick talk and we'll see you again very, very soon.